So with the new format starting on Monday, there's going to be a lot of you heading out this weekend, going to locals and stuff, trying to collect all the new cards for the new format and stuff, things that you might be needing for your decks, etc. And obviously some decks are going to be more expensive than others. And this video is just going to look at 10 different budget options that you can play for the coming format that are okay and somewhat competitive for the price range that you're kind of looking at. This is in no particular order, I'm just going to name them as they kind of come. But let's get into it. We have, first of all, I'm going to put ABC. Now ABC is just a very, very easy to get base. It's a structure deck, right? So I mean, that thing's probably sold out by now, but the cards are not expensive at all. The actual core of the deck itself is just really, really cheap. And also considering the fact that Ancient Fairy Dragon has just been banned, you're probably not going to be looking at the super kind of link spammy version and stuff. And I guess that's good if you're uh, if you're more on a budget because then you don't need to buy all these crazy extra deck cards. So I would recommend going with the uh, this kind of trap route, uh, maybe sort of like the artifact variant and stuff. Shout outs to Calvin Tahan. You can check out his profile somewhere on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's actually not a bad option going into the coming format. Uh, you are going to need like hand traps and stuff to stop the Goki deck. And ABC is perfectly fine at facilitating enough space to be able to... Uh, play lots of hand traps. And the next deck is Dino. Again, you're going to be seeing a bit of a theme here with regards to, you know, how many hand traps can I fit into my deck. And yeah, this is another deck that uh, can utilize quite a lot of them to stop the Goki deck. It's not actually terrible against Draco as well, if that deck is going to become meta. So you have lots of different options with how you want to build Dino. There's, it's, it's very, very versatile. You can play like a, you know, a more stunny variant. You can play like a combo based variant. Honestly, even with Grass Band, you can probably go with 60 cards and uh, the deck would just, you know, be fine. You have an insane boss monster in Tyranno. You can just like completely ob obliterate boards and uh, Kartalos is really good for uh, setting up good boards yourself. Uh, Dino's you know, just a really, really good budget option. There's, I think, maybe a couple of cards in the extra deck that might be expensive depending on which version of the, vari of the kind of variant you're playing. But other than that, like the main deck itself is actually pretty cool for uh, Dino. You shouldn't really have too much uh, trouble picking these cards up. And the next deck is Paleo and maybe even potentially a deck that could actually be seriously competitive just because of the fact that the strongest, like most annoying thing this deck could deal with was like Masterpiece. And just in a format with Masterpiece, it's really hard to really justify playing a trap heavy deck like this. But regardless of what you think of the deck, it is extremely cheap and the actual cards that you'll be needing that are paleo, not you know, not including staples and stuff. Paleo is super, super cheap. So I would recommend picking this up if you do like the kind of trap kind of uh, play style. If you like that kind of mechanic, if you enjoy, you know, just frogs in general. It, this deck's a really, really good option for you. And next deck is uh, Burning Abyss. This is a bit of a safe investment. I think it's kind of a bit of a gamble. It's, it's really, really cheap right now. But, you know, it's it's not really that weird of a thing to assume that we could maybe be getting Cherubini at some point. So this is maybe perhaps a bit of a long-term investment. And, yeah, with Cherubini coming out, this deck could probably going to be extremely, extremely good. You know, pro maybe even, like, you know, best deck level of good uh, if, if we get that card. Maybe, who knows? It just, it just kind of depends on how the format shapes up and stuff. Obviously, Burning Abyss is notorious for just playing on any amount of stun cards and hand traps and stuff. So, and there's so many different ways to build this deck and mix it with other decks that it's it's just, uh, you're, you're really gonna have no real downtime when it comes to making creative choices and stuff with Burning Abyss. A very, very good budget option. And like I said, a very safe investment as well if you are considering maybe playing this deck in the long term and thinking about when Cherubini comes out. And the next deck is Light Sworn. Again, I don't think this deck is, by any stretch of the imagination, should be disqualified because of the banning of grass. It just could mean that perhaps maybe you'd have to consider playing a 40 card variant, maybe just less cards in general, but probably maybe a little bit over 40, less than 60. The plant engine itself is just extremely powerful and this deck is really, really cheap. Honestly, everything is like so, so easy to get in this deck. I think that the only thing that's really gonna set you back any amount of money ever is a uh, Saryuya and maybe Borrowload if you uh, if you can afford it. And Borrowload is way less important now for the deck because uh, previously you used to play the Borrowload as a way to uh, out your uh, masterpiece. Uh, but you don't even need that anymore and some people weren't even playing it in the first place. So yeah, Light Sworn is a really good option to go with. The Brilliant Fusion Engine could be a little bit expensive. That's probably like the only really pricey main deck card you're looking at. But yeah, Light Sworn, lots of good variants of Light Sworn, lots of good mixes with this deck, lots of different things to put together. It's a, it's a pretty okay deck and like I said, this this is probably a little bit more on the expensive side of the budget section if you know what I mean, but it's it's a solid choice going into the next format if you do enjoy um, the, the sort of mill mechanic and that sort of playstyle. 
Another option for you is DDD, and this deck didn't lose any power whatsoever, assuming that there was any power to be lost in the first place, but it's gotten significantly cheaper now, and it's something I would recommend going forward with this deck. If you uh, if you do play this deck, I'd recommend going forward with the, uh, the sort of pendulum spam, and obviously with magicians, basically, I wouldn't call them dead at all, but at least that's kind of the perception, uh, Electromites have dropped significantly in, uh, in their price. So this is definitely an option for you going forward. So you have access to Synchros, Fusions, Xyz, uh, Links as well. Like the deck can run everything. So, you know, that it's a really kind of fun playstyle. It's very, very combo based. If you do enjoy lots of combos, if you do enjoy, you know, kind of like having to think like five different like plays ahead of time and stuff, this deck is really, really good for you. Uh, and it shouldn't be too expensive at all. And you do have the option of uh, getting a couple of nice little super rares and stuff. The deck looks really nice with all the sort of OTS support and stuff it got um, with the rarity bumps and that. So I, 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 it's something I'm actually personally considering picking up. Uh, but yeah, definitely not a deck for beginners. I'll, I'll tell you that much. If you're if you're just like starting out and stuff, yeah, pr just maybe, maybe it's best you just pa give a pass to DDD. But for those of you who are a little bit more versed in like kind of high Adderall style combos, then yeah, DD is a solid choice and it's, uh, it's it shouldn't be that expensive with Electromites going down. Another option is Shiranui. Now this deck is, uh, well, what can we say? It's 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 a uh, it's got the Amano, and uh, that card's really really good if you're able to uh, you know set it up and stuff uh, because it doesn't bounce back to the hand in the end phase. So just having something that can turbo that card out is really awesome. It's really good for like spinning uh, back row and monsters. Uh, when you're going second, there's lots of different kind of board clears that you can do with the ritual monsters. So I think that this deck is a decent enough bot job just because of how fucking cheap it is. It is so, so cheap. Like, I, I actually can't think of, like, what the most expensive card in this deck would have to be. It'd probably be, like, Desires or Pre-Prep or some kind of staple that just isn't in the deck, right? So a, de a, de a decent option and something to consider going forward. Another shout-out here would must be to Zephra, of course. One of my all-time kind of favorite decks. And this deck obviously didn't really lose anything at all with the ban list, honestly, well, unless you were playing the Astrogaff combo version, but I personally am kind of more tailored towards this sort of uh, hand trap heavy variant, and I always played that one without the Astrographs. So in terms of my build, which you can find on my channel, honestly, I haven't changed that much either, um, that, that hasn't changed at all. So you can run that just fine, and you don't need to pick up any extra cards for it. Now, the couple of extra deck cards might be a little bit expensive, but as far as I'm aware, not really anything should be that dire other than Electromite, which, again, should have dropped a little bit in price. Another deck is Ritual Beast. So, again, if you're able to actually play your deck in the coming format, Ritual Beast is, uh, is really, really fun. It's, it's super combo-based. It's got lots of uh, new kind of interactions and stuff you can do with the with the Link monster that they had released. This thing's really, really fun to play. If you do enjoy that really, really combo-based style of playing, if you do enjoy, like, lots and lots of uh, the different kinds of special summoning and stuff, you're going to really enjoy uh, Ritual Beast because you, you literally spell special summon about, like, 30 times in a turn with this deck. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the thing that you can play with this deck. It's obviously way, way cheaper than uh, some of the other options. I honestly... Don't think there's a single main deck like like Ritual Beast like card that's like above like a couple dollars or something. It's it's insanely cheap. It's it's definitely worth picking up if you're looking for a super super budget version. And the final option here is Mermel. I think that Mermel's with uh, Dragoons coming back to three has put them potentially maybe in the position of being an actually like competitive like serious meta deck, not just like a kind of budget casual friendly thing. With the uh, OCG uh, results and stuff, I think there was a period in time where Seca Mermels were like legitimately like insane with like the Elemental Lord uh, that could like loop your hand and stuff. They could just do like all these crazy combos turn one. It was super, super consistent. Um, but I think that we're missing things like uh, Needle Fiber, I believe maybe even Storm and Sorcerer as well to do some of the really, really nuts things that that deck could do in the OCG. But over here, at least, you know, it could be a bit of an investment and, you know, with three Dragoons back up, it could be a thing to try out for yourself. If you maybe already have a couple of cards of the deck or something, I wouldn't really recommend it if you're trying to build it from scratch because it is a little bit on the more expensive side now, especially since the ban list went down and yeah, a lot of people are trying to pick this deck up again. So maybe give this a miss if you're not looking to spend anywhere near that much. And I guess if you do want a water version of the, uh, a water deck to play with for the new format, I'd maybe go with Paleo as, uh, as your water deck instead of uh, Mermel. So yeah, all of the options that I've mentioned in this video are all very varied and different playstyles. You have so many different mechanics being utilized by all these different decks. So there's something for everyone here and something in this list will probably get your attention. Consider becoming a Patreon of mine and support me. Watch my Twitch live streams, follow me on Twitch, and follow me on Twitter for the different social media updates. Join the Discord community. 
And remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Until next time, farewell.